Hello, how's it going? I'm Allison. Welcome to another video. This video is a segue from proactive resilience of the past to proactive resilience of the future. And I'm sharing this with you because I intend on going into a new chapter of my life and this YouTube channel, this community, and I think of us, me and you, YouTube, <laughs> but you, you, YouTube, as being in a relationship and I've been kind of distant and maybe it doesn't seem like that to you but it's definitely seemed like that to me and I just kind of want to share with you guys a life update, a family update, and a YouTube update in between then and uh, now, like moving forward what I want to do with YouTube which I'll share more about probably at the end of this video. And before I get into all that, I want to give you guys a general life update for me. For me, for what's going on with me, what has been going on, and where I'm at now. And also tell you guys about my family, my family dynamic of the past and the present, because I have realized that while I share about my life, my um, experience within my family, you guys don't know anything about my family. And a lot of that is on purpose. I want to protect the privacy of people who many of them don't even know about this channel in my family, wouldn't approve of the channel, and would probably have different things to say about the family. You know, I don't want to go sharing someone else's business on YouTube. You know, speaking for anyone else, I'm speaking for myself. And there's also so many reasons why I don't share more details with you guys. Really intense, secretive, paranoid, um, crazy reasons. You know, family dynamic. My family is just as, you know, interesting, complex as yours, if you can imagine. So there's lots of reasons I don't share that with you, and I'm kind of happy that you guys don't necessarily know the full picture, but I do want you guys to know a little bit about my family. And if you're still listening to my rambles at this point, I think that you deserve to know. <laughs> so I'm just going to share a little bit about that life, family, and YouTube. So the first thing that I want to share today <laughs> is I moved. My partner bought a house, my partner Eric, and me and him are now living here and it means so much to me it's hard to express so something really important to me that i want to share and oh, just implore is how important it is to get away from toxic environments especially living with your narcissistic parents your alcoholic parents and your siblings in a lot of circumstances a lot of families just do best not living with each other, especially. Sometimes not talking to each other, but first step is getting away, getting space from your family. But beyond that, getting into an environment that really suits you, that you can feel really free and safe and happy in is super duper important and I know that healing health happiness it starts as an inside job but we are this inside thing this enigma this soul or whatever but we are also embodied on earth in this grounded earthy plane and it's very important to have a connection with the environment around us that adds to our life, adds to our energy in a, like a really positive way and that we can add to in a positive way that just, you know, creates this vortex of goodness. So that was um, a kind of hippy-dippy way of saying, I feel like this environment that I'm in now is more conducive to me being me and living my dreams, thriving than any other environment that I've been in. And guys, I have moved around a lot. And a reason why it's so conducive is we were supposed to move in with roommates, mostly for financial reasons, like financial excelling. We can afford the place ourselves, but why not pay it off early, you know? 
However, the roommates ended up not moving in with us, and so now it's just me, Eric, Pharaoh, and Lucy. And Eric goes to work, and then it's just me, Pharaoh, and Lucy here until I go to work. But I have a lot of space to do this. And I can't tell you guys how important this is to me. And not only this, but I feel comfortable doing self-care the way that I really want to do it, which is like waking up at whatever time I want. Sometimes it's 5 a.m. and sometimes, you know, it's 8. But in my old house, I had so many roommates and the floor was really creaky and people were always out in the living room and I just didn't want to do my self-care like my exercise and my meditation and my podcast listening and all the things with everyone around I just felt like encroached upon my energy my space my safety it just didn't feel comfortable for me and especially making videos didn't feel comfortable and without that self-care and that free flow which I don't know I could have done but I just couldn't I couldn't do it I couldn't, I can't, I don't know, everyone's different, and for me it was just not possible for me to do what I wanted to do in the space I was in. Now I'm able to wake up whenever, do my thing, how I freely want to, and then create, you know, in my spare time with all the drive, whenever inspiration hits, I can just create, which kind of ebbs and flows with the conversation about YouTube that I want to have with you guys. But finishing up this kind of conversation about my life, moving into this house is an amazing boost. Um, it's a dream come true for a lot of different reasons. It feels like a big step forward when I have felt stagnant and stuck and kind of oppressed and not free for a while in an environmental sense even though i had like really great roommates and i love them so much i love my friends i still felt like encroached upon and and then other freedom involves family the freedom that i now have from my family which is an, also a later conversation but anywho i have freedom here and also location has energy and memory and so in this house, in this room, I don't bring stagnant, procrastinating, like dull, like mixed energy, like sometimes sitting here on my phone doing blah, 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 blah. This room is focused. That room downstairs is focused. My bedroom is sacred for like relaxing and my living room for, you know, spending time with people. It's just all got a new energy that I'm putting in and I'm not allowing old stagnant bad energy and activities in I'm just coming in with this new intention and energy and it all builds the energy of a room it builds if you're used to going in this one place and working then when you go there you're gonna have the habit of working and so uh, there's that, and also just, ah, Eric, he accepts me in a way that I have never felt accepted in my whole life, and that's just a beautiful thing. So, um, to be unconditionally loved and accepted by somebody is such a life-changing experience, and to be living in a home with him who hears me out fully, you know, he doesn't put up with my crap, and I have crap, guys. I'm not perfect. But to be living with him and just him and the cats who I love and who love me unconditionally in this home with this new energy that we set and create and keep where I'm able to be free, it's just, oh, it's awesome. So on another note, I've been very busy moving things in, renovating, decorating, we're not done by any means, and that's a whole project that's taken up a lot of time. I've also been working a lot because all of this costs money and um, I've been working a lot and uh, I've just been really, really busy. And so that's another reason why I haven't been on YouTube as present as I've wanted to be. A typical day in my life looks like waking up, doing self-care, doing some creation here, even though you guys haven't been seeing it, going to work 
for like either four hours or a nice eight hours coming home and then enjoying, you know, being present with my cats and with Eric and that's what a day in my life looks like and it's full. And honestly, taking on more responsibility has increased my capacity to do things. I used to just sit sometimes and feel like, oh, kind of depressed, like so overwhelmed. Eric's calling one second. Hello? Yeah. Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, do you have a second? Kinda. Yeah. Can you scoot the stove out and take a picture of the back of it and send it to me? Okay, one sec. I'm back! Hi! Okay, so that was Eric's voice. Maybe you'll see his face sometime. He's been in a video in the past, um, How to Welcome More Love in Your Life, if you watch that. It's a really good video. The first video that I used this camera four and he shows up in the end and anyways he's been just a source of love for me for a long time and if he needs my help to take a picture of a stove gosh darn it i will do that anyways i've been busy and able very able to do so much and a big thing a big part of that has been talking with you actually with so many of you We've been talking via email, I've been on calls with just a ton of you, of you beautiful, beautiful humans, and that has been absolutely life-changing. First of all, for me, I've just loved meeting you. I've worked with several of you, and am working with several of you. If anyone wants to work with me, you know, again, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but hit me up. I feel like it's my purpose and it's definitely my passion and um, it could be really beneficial to you. Anywho, that has been just a huge drive for me to really step up my game, you know, and expand into my potential, into my energy, my fire. Um, that sounds kind of vague, but uh, That is just a big part of the life update and a simple way to share it. Uh, talking with you guys has been awesome. And I think it's time to move into the next segment of this conversation. So let's all take a sip of water to segue. Lucy brought her little ball. Come here, come in, come to the frame, baby. She picks things up, fetches them, and brings them to you. She brought a noisy ball in today, which is not ideal, but... Not ideal for the video, I mean. Hi, baby. Come here. Lucy. Mm. Along the lines of working more. Hi, baby. Come say hello. Oh, she's purring. She's grown so much, hasn't she? I love her. And y'all love her, too. And thank you for your love of the kitties. Hi, baby. How are you doing? Um, with moving, like I said, it's cost money and I've been working a lot. However, uh, it's been kind of weird. This is all going to segue into me talking about my family, I suppose, because that's, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, because, Lucy, come on, you're in the way of the microphone. My partner, Eric, he is like, let's do this right, which is how he does things. You know, if you put some time into it, he's going to put his all into it right now. No procrastination and do it and do it well and follow it through to its end. And anyways, um, with things for the house and with finances, he's been like, we need this and we're going to get it and then we're going to... Yeah? What else, hon? What else? What do you got to say about that? Do you like the things? Yeah, she does. He's been buying nice stuff. You know, like, I've been contributing as much as I can, but I don't know. I don't have my finances together to buy a whole house and fill it with new furniture and stuff, but 
he's 25 and does good for him that's amazing I think it's kind of because of the money mindset which is what I'm getting into here he grew up in a home where finances were openly discussed and shared not only between the parents but with the kids as well and there was no secrets but in my family I never knew how much my parents made where all that money went if there were savings if there was any extra for us I knew that my dad had a job that supplied very well he was an engineer in Detroit with the big three and my mom on the other hand she was um there was never enough there was never enough money and she would spend it and then you'd get stressed and we would want to do things and would but be guilted for it because it would take up money and money was just this weird enigma full of fear and for me coming into this home first of all receiving it as like this massive gift from someone who I love so much and I know loves me but still like that's like a whirlwind of something to receive like wow you bought a house for us whoa and now you're gonna buy furniture for it and new appliances and put all this these hours of work into renovations and things and not only do it but do it well not just get like the bare minimum thing but get the one that we really want and get all this stuff that will make us start out on this very abundant fresh start you know not lacking anything, not lacking even our taste, not lacking it at all, and not fearful of doing that, just like, just doing it. It's cool. It's very cool, very uncomfortable for me, but I'm always like, well, that sounds like extra, like we don't need to do that, we don't need that, you know, we can go without, and he's like, but why? why go without why not do this why not do that and i'm like well money money like oh we need to save our money oh my gosh there's not enough and um also like for me i realized that i've always been not only wanting money for myself and my basic needs but any extra i've been wanting in my mind to give to my family, to provide for them, because I felt the weight of them having provided for me, and I want to give back. And I also see that, you know, certain family members don't feel adequately provided for, and I want to provide for them, because being provided for and supported in a way that you don't have to be fearful of lack is also a very special experience as well as being loved abundantly, you know, rather than just like bare minimum or, you know, not at all. And so, um, I just, it's very different to not only feel provided for, but like excessively blessed, you know, and also not responsible for my family and not guilty for doing well. Yeah, for me, it's a whole big paradigm shift. So that brings us to the health and lack lack thereof with my family. So I'm gonna show you guys this is my plan for this video life YouTube and family and I just left it blank (laughs) because I'm just gonna speak from the heart about this I don't have points to share I'm just gonna kind of say what's up so I told you guys about kind of like the money tone fear of lack and then guilt shame negative stuff okay happening surrounding money and feeling provided for and feeling safe. I'm trying to make um, an association here between money and 
the rest of the energy within the household. Like fear, lack, guilt, shame, negativity. That was a common energy thread with my family, unfortunately. You know, and no family's perfect. That probably happened at some point, you know, with all families. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But <sighs> I'm going to tell you guys about the dynamic of my family back in the day. So my dad was the breadwinner. He worked a lot, was always stressed about work, not in a job that he really loved, mostly because of the people at his work. It didn't seem like they were on his side, like egging him on. They were more like putting pressure on him. And, you know, 2008 happened, the recession, it hit the big three in Detroit, the motor companies, pretty hard and it was just a lot of stress for my dad and he was always stressed not only about work money his work environment and co-workers but also family and the relationships there and the money there and so he would go to work come home sit on the couch and drink I saw Bud Light in his hand but there was harder alcohol hidden, you know, that I didn't see. And so it seemed he was picked on by my mom. And I now recall, I mean, I don't actually recall. He told me that I used to get upset with him about drinking. I don't recall this at all, actually. I recall being older and just thinking that's how it is and it's fine. You know, it's not really causing any trouble. He's stressed, he works hard, there's stress at home, like, let him just do his thing, let him escape on the couch and do his thing, okay? Why are we getting mad at him about it? I think that we're getting mad at him about it because we're just getting mad about everything all the time. That was my dad. My mom was the one getting mad about everything all the time and being a source of anger for him, too, because she would just, like, he would not want to renovate the house and she was, like, this interior designer artist and so... Sometimes he would like come home and she would have redone like a room in the house and he'd be like, why did you do that? Or like redone the whole entire basement and yeah. So she would just do her thing, my mom. And uh, she would also like work sometimes. He would always be wanting her to get a job and so she would work and then something would happen and she would have to quit or get workers comp or whatever. But she was more so invested in like being a part of the schools and being in our extracurriculars or just doing her thing really in general. And also her thing was drama, <laughs> like finding dramas, exploiting them, talking about them with everybody, yelling at everybody about it, you know. And it wasn't like that 24-7, but largely it was. Mm-hmm. Largely enough for me to constantly feel like stressed and like from both of them and like the whole family, like I was just always feeling stressed, negative, looking at the negative side of a situation. Thank God I have this innate optimism that's just like I think a part of who I am. I just maybe like there's this also wisdom inside of me that I think allows me to see the good and like drives me to see the good and the opportunity but anyways um <sighs> my older sister bless her heart uh she got in trouble as a teenager rebelled against my parents both of them and had some rough years but made it through all right my twin sister was always compared to her and said that, and we're the youngest, and in between, the oldest and ourselves is my brother. And my brother was like, kind of perfect. Um, I'd say golden child, but also lost child, as well as myself. Lost child, golden child, and that's not a thing with going into the YouTube conversation. I feel judged for being the lost child and the golden child. And I hate saying that I was the golden child. And I don't believe that I was. 
I believe that I was a source of counsel for my parents and confused and open to hearing what they had to say about what was going on, especially with my sisters, you know, with my dad, with the world, and therefore not scapegoated. But I saw my siblings being scapegoated and dysfunction of the family, and I was definitely affected by it. You know, I loved them. It was hard to see everyone else be abused and me, myself, be abused later on. You know, I didn't have easy, and I hate that I have to defend myself you know, about that. Not to everyone, but to some people. I'm on your team, all right, guys? We're all on the same team together, just trying to heal and grow. Anyways, um, my twin sister was always told, you're going to be just like your older sister. And yeah, that was said a lot. And I think she resigned to believing that if you say I'm going to be, then why not just be that? You know, it's not like you're going to believe it if I'm good anyways. And so just kind of followed in her footsteps only to a little bit more of a dangerous degree. Her health really deteriorated, deteriorated um, for a moment at the end of high school. But she also got it together. Um, my brother, he more so is very shy to make change in his life, kind of following in the footsteps of not being happy in his job and also not doing anything to like change that situation, um, which I think a lot of people, a lot, a lot, a lot of people in society do. It's not too unhealthy, but, um, he, he and I, I don't know, we're doing all right right now. Um, I think... He sees things more like clear cut, like sister is being abusive and terrible and I'm not going to deal with it. I don't have to and I'm not. And, you know, blanket that over things. He sees things simply. And some people do. Some people go through family dynamics and just make it out seeing things as they are, their hearts less intertwined for I don't know what reason, their role in the family, their personality traits, their other life experiences. It could be just so many things, but that's kind of where he is. I'm <laughs> gonna go back. Now I'm coming, uh, I guess, to like the present day. My brother's doing all right. Me and him are really great. Me, him, and my dad are all talking. And my dad, I recently mentioned naltrexone to him. It's this drug that makes it so that alcohol doesn't do the same thing to your mind and make you get this big rush of dopamine and reward in your brain when you take a drink. And then this craving for more that makes you keep drinking biologically um, as well as the habits that form almost biologically like almost as concretely just in your mind in your mental space in your emotional space like you get a feeling you drink like there's so many components to consistent substance abuse however this one helps the biological part, which is kind of the basis of the other ones, that reward center, that big actual biological rush that you feel when you take a drink. And um, he's exploring that, which is cool, you know, and it's cool that I was able to find a resource, share it with him, and then take it. You know, that at least, the like my basis of resilience is, okay, there's an issue, let's find a thing to try to deal with it and try to resolve it and move forward. And also, me just being able to share my thoughts with someone and then say, be open to my thoughts, not just reject it. And um, that's really important to me. And with my sisters and my mom, they aren't open to me being myself, being open with them, sharing ideas for resilience in very important matters, especially but down to the little tiny, like me just sharing an opinion or idea of mine, it's not always received at all um, and not well, you know, and it's to varying degrees. 
my older sister I have hopes to be in touch with, but still, like, for big things, uh, there's issues. There's really, really deep, deep, deep deep-rooted issues in those relationships. We're not all doing great. They're not all doing fantastic. They're not all doing bad. I think they're actually doing all right. Everyone's doing all right, but, um, hmm. There's something about resilience that's, like, having faith, trusting that you are loved, that you are taken care of, not being assuming of the people in your life, being open to them, receptive of them, caring about them, you know, not just as assets to yourself, but as uh, individuals with their own needs that they're taking care of, first and foremost, and respecting that. Um, that's part of resilience that's really important to me, and uh, it's hard seeing people not doing that for themselves. So my family relationships, it's been tough to uh, manage that, and in those relationships at this time, it's not being managed. We're just not in contact right now. So going into another point um, regarding YouTube is today is, what, what day is it? Thursday. December 3rd, 2020. This is not to say that this is how the dynamic is going to be December 3rd, 2021, when you may be watching this video. If you are, if it's December 3rd, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2021, <laughs> let me know because that would be freaking weird. But regarding all my videos, things that I have shared in the past, I don't necessarily agree with now and like I'm not necessarily in that place now that's not authentic for me now and people watch it now and think that I'm the same person all throughout and the truth is I'm sharing what's authentic for me now and what I believe is collectively universally correct enough authentic enough to share with you at this time as like long-term, you know, longev, uh, but it's not necessarily, you know, and especially concerning particular dynamics in my family. That is changing. It is an active organism, a relationship. It's like, it's changing, it's evolving. We as individuals are evolving in every relationship in our life, everything in the natural world. It's always changing. It's never the same. And so me, in general, this is me now, but it's not necessarily me of the future or the past. Okay, and a lot of you guys understand that, but I'm just going to put that out there. (sighs) And now, you know, coming back to me and segueing into YouTube. Let's take another drink as we segue. Water and coffee at the same time. Just kidding. If you're still here, cheers. Cheers to you. Thanks for being here, being a pal. Thanks for caring, for listening. I appreciate you. So my time on YouTube, let's just, let's just put it in those terms. My time on YouTube has been like two and a half years, I think, since May, May. 2018, two and a half years, and six months before that, I discovered adult children of alcoholics. I went to my first meeting, like maybe three, four, five months before that, I discovered narcissism. So it's been like three years of intense learning, growing. Yeah. But concerning my family. I went no contact with my mom for about a year. Had this really intense thing happen with my older sister. Lost contact for her nearly completely for the past 18 months. And then had this intense thing happen with my twin sister. That's been for the last 12 months. And Boom, boom, boom. Big, big, big things that have really, really shaped me as a person. 
that you guys don't know too much about and I can't share the details with you but I can say they changed my perspective about how I view families and people and how my heart works especially uh, it's just like expanded my heart <sighs> what I would say is that there's been so many moments in my life where things have felt like constant crisis mode and I have felt almost deadened inside to the emotional connection with life and people. I've been just kind of lost in this mental space of overwhelm. And uh, as I've learned to not dissociate, you know, and really connect with myself and with people, these not constant crisis mode, actual crises things have happened with my sisters and it's mm, made me realize like my love for them in a different way than I had been able to felt before so anyways on that same coin the other side of it the flip side of the same coin my twin sister and I have not been getting along and she I'm sure would have a lot to say about that that's different than what I have to say actually it's the same thing that we say about each other but you know both of us saying it to each other and I think you guys know how that goes you know you say like hey person this is happening like why is this happening why are you treating me this way you know or like you say you're doing this blah 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 but like a more I guess the open way to say it is like hey why are you doing this like you know uh, this is happening whatever you know take politic political communication out of it we say you're doing this and then they say no you're doing this and we both believe that we're right right of course I'm having a hard time getting this out because I'm still trying to protect her but I have learned when to speak up when to hold back you know and when you're saying hurtful things to someone it's better to keep it inside and that's what I've been doing. And I've been trying really hard to be there for her during this time of crisis. Real crisis, okay? Especially because nearly no one else is. Everyone else has walked away or been pushed away by her. And uh, it's really intense. Like it, that statement goes deeper than I can express. And so I feel like I'm the last lifeline for her, and I've been there. I've tried to be there, but it hasn't been good enough. And not just in this passive-aggressive, like, I'm not being there good enough for her way, but like, it's very blunt, a frontal, I'm a terrible sister in person. I need to think about someone else besides myself for once in my life. I'm only in her life because no one else is like, and I'm still like no good. Like I'm almost worse than anyone else. Like because I see the good in other people who I should agree with her and see as very terrible because of these things that they do to her and I'm you know instead seeing that they're doing things as individuals and humans and I 
see her doing things as an individual and a human and they don't necessarily mesh but it's not because they're a terrible person you know <sighs> my beliefs and character were not just questioned but blatantly torn apart and uh I also was healing, you know, from all of this. And in this situation in my home where I didn't feel like free, you know, and maybe it's because of this, maybe it was that dynamic spreading into everything, you know. And that I really believe was the case, um, you know, behind the scenes from YouTube, segueing. I have been going through hard things and not only like from someone else or other people but internally like also not being perfect not doing things that I want to do and you know self-sabotaging and like being mean to friends and feeling misunderstood and like I'm not perfect, I'm growing just like you are. And so I've got my own inner dialogue of shame and guilt and criticism that's just brutal. It's brutal and I've personified it as this monster and now when it comes out, I'm like, there's my monster. Listen, like go back in your cage, okay? I'm not ready to just like expel it completely. That's a process. I don't even know. I don't know if I'll ever get there. But I've got this monster and we all do, I think. We have that internalized from other people in our lives from monster of a critic inside of ourselves. And I don't know if yours is as bad as mine is, but I mean, you know, mine is freaking bad. And I also have this influence outside of myself feeding the monster, telling it you're terrible you're a terrible person all you think of is yourself you don't try you don't put in any effort at all you say you're going to and then you don't you know it fueled the monster even though like I was fueling this positive self within me and like that's the only thing that like got me through my by being like no I'm a good person like I know myself I know my intentions I know my heart my actions don't always align, and that's not harmonious. But a reason why is because I'm being attacked and then not standing up for myself. You know, oh, my tummy rumbled. Uh, that's disharmonious, you know? Not honoring yourself and your heart and being in relationships that are toxic to you at this time. Like, that is not in harmony, you know? And it seeps into other actions. You're not honoring yourself in all these different ways. Largely because, like, you're not honoring yourself to another person who's telling you that you're not good. You're kind of putting up with it. And, like, doing old reactions and responses in that relationship that aren't actually like sticking up for yourself, you know, there. It's, do you know what I'm saying? So, I think like at the beginning of my YouTube journey, okay, <laughs> we're back to me, hi guys. I was this lost child. I had no authentic self. I was all monster. <laughs> I don't know, like there was this little authentic self, but it wasn't like, fueled barely and I had no voice and YouTube was the biggest tool along my journey of finding my voice <sighs> and a lot of growth in general wow this video is gonna be so long <laughs> but um, I started putting so much self-care and work into myself and uh, came a really far away, you know, far enough to get to the point 12 months ago where I started being attacked and I was able to 
righteously and honestly say no that's not true i'm gonna be there for you anyways but i see what you're saying and it's not true i'm not gonna let it in i'm still gonna be strong and love you and try to help anyways you hear my voice crack <laughs> it didn't work it didn't work looking back like but i tried my absolute freaking hardest but anyways um I was in a great place like a couple years ago, knowing I was cared for, like really putting so much into my friends and my friendships. And over the last year, not only with this relationship, but like a lot of things in my life kind of fell apart. Like if you watch my December, like I failed my New Year's intention 2019 um, video, like I was basically without a job and I had been planning to graduate and taking the wrong class and then there was this big crisis going on and like I was just feeling so just like uh, wow depleted and uh, that happens sometimes on our journey but anyways I had been feeling so good and then I think all of the abuse I was going through and the monster within myself it gained more traction than the self-care that was necessary to like make progress and uh, there's been pros you know especially in the past like six months really positive things that have happened for me and those are undeniable and at the same time though uh, I recently I've learned that I have not been doing well in a mental way. You know, my brain is like learning things and, oh God, this is getting so discombobulated, I'm sorry. But what I wanna say is like, I'm finally doing better. I don't have that negative influence in my life right now. And I also have all this space to really invest in myself again and fuel the positive parts of myself and I'm so aware of the monster at this point in time and the emotional flashbacks that come that I know are just triggers from the past in this moment like I can tell myself like it's fine like cut and dry like I'm doing what's best for me I'm protecting my peace I don't owe anyone and even if they say I do like it's not true I owe myself and I deserve good things. I deserve to be happy, whatever that means. And I'm doing a lot better. Pause, one sec. Okay, hello. I had to go to the bathroom. Okay, so, that concludes some of the harder discussions that I wanted to share with you guys today, but it does segue into one last more difficult thing that I want to say and it involves YouTube and you hopefully not you if you've been listening to me ramble for however long I trust that you have a genuine capacity to have empathy for others and desire to learn about me and open to me having you know growth and sharing with you guys and then you tinkering with your concept of who I am in your brain um, rather than keeping it concrete. Um, but I'm sharing context with you guys because no video or amount of videos that I could share with you guys could accurately and comprehensively get across to you the essence of my being. It can get across persona, you know, the image and expression of who I am at this time, but even if you had them all together, you wouldn't know me, how I love and hate and perceive the world and make decisions and all of the different things, all of the different aspects of my life, you know, I try, I try so hard in my life and I don't always 
succeed, you know, to reach however I want to be. But I try really hard. And the thing is, some people watch my videos and think that that video, that expression of my truth at that point in time is the summation of who I am and my beliefs and my understanding. <sighs> and I can tell you, Allison of the future is watching this right now and thinking, oh, I wish I could say this and this and this as well as that. But there's just no way. There's no way that I can accurately get across everything on my mind and everything that I know and believe to be true on this topic. It's just, and it's just impossible. It's impossible for you guys to get me totally through a video, through this video, through every single one of my videos. But I understand that most people understand that. And that's great, you know, and I appreciate those of you who take the time to hear me out, especially in videos like this where I'm just like trying to explain a little bit more to you about me behind the videos that you watch about things that perhaps change your life. They change your day. They change your thinking for like moments in time. Like, don't you care to know about the person who's doing that? I don't know. Maybe people don't, but I would, and so I want to share with you guys who do care, but when I share things, I now know that people are not always like me and like receiving them the way that I openly would. So just today, like on my video about Munchausen's by proxy, someone commented and said, boring with a bunch of yawn emojis and the other day someone said like you are narcissistic by talking about yourself in a whole video like is this just a thing that your generation does or are you really the narcissist you know something like that and I was like and people just in general they're mean sometimes and that you know I'm like okay I can have empathy, like I get it, that's fine, I don't really care, you know, but what I think is narcissistic, you know, on a little tangent, is sharing your thoughts without considering or caring how they affect another person, especially when it's in a negative way, you know, hopefully you consider the other person and care and want to uplift them, and so either say something that's uplifting or you don't say anything at all, you know, and just leave, go spend your time elsewhere rather than like sharing negativity with the world. But that aside, other people who it does actually affect me is when people have a relationship with me, like in the comments, as much of a relationship as we can have. And that's kind of like the conversation that I just had with you guys about how you guys don't know me fully, it's just, through videos and even through the comment section like um, we will have been making a connection over time together them lifting me up and like saying how they relate to me and all this stuff and then I'll share one thing and they'll say I can't I can't do this anymore and I gotta go like or they'll just disappear and uh, That happens in life. And on the internet, it's easier to be like, I disagree with that and I'm gonna walk away. And that's fine. Like, I hope that you guys don't have influences in your life that you don't agree with. But at the same time, it's really shown me that like I can share as much as I can and try as hard as I can and people just won't always understand or care to understand, you know? or won't respect my being different, my honoring what feels right for me in the moment, my perhaps making a mistake to learn a lesson that I need to learn myself, you know, without them telling me to make the lesson, make the right move, the right move. You know, and that's not only with people in the comments, but with people in my family. Like, 
and people at large, the world at large, like, I'm open to people making their mistakes, you know, and people aren't always going to be open with me, and that's fine, but especially on the internet, like, it's weird, like, having a relationship with y'all and not knowing very much about you at all, for some of you, not knowing anything about you at all, and for you, perhaps thinking that you know a lot about me, but not, you know, not necessarily knowing a lot about me. And then on the flip side, there are people who we've had relationships, you know, in the comments and who I know are very open to me and I'm open to them. Even, you know, their feedback. I'm, I'm open to constructive feedback too, I just want to say that. But who have said, you know, I haven't been watching your videos as much anymore because I'm distancing myself from this healing, you know, and instead taking my healing into the active real world around me and the living in a way that's not hyper focused on narcissism and family dynamic and my issues but rather on the goodness and abundance and strength that's within me and around me and I get that too and that is beautiful and it's something that I've been experiencing for myself okay moving out of the hard stuff I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys because it's been enlightening for me like as someone who is growing out of people pleasing and fear and conditionality in acceptance and love and into acceptance and gratitude in all connections that I have <sighs> it's really important for me to just share that with you guys <laughs> like that's been a um, method of me learning that and I hope that maybe you guys don't have to learn that yourself but it's just weird it's weird that I share and I don't know what people are gonna think if people are gonna think that I'm freaking crazy in making this video it's probably like an hour long at this point just talking about all this stuff or if people are gonna really like it I just don't know and so going forward I'm gonna share more and share more of me, as much as me as I can, and uh, do it my way, in the way that I've been wanting to. Because life is short, and why the heck not? And other reasons, you know, it's, I feel like my purpose, my dharma. But what the heck was I about to say? Hmm. 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 So that's the next chapter that I'm going into, <laughs> but a chapter that I was just in was also like not only like struggling with this monster and this blah blah blah, but also like learning lessons actively like in the field, like in real life with my friends, with my family, with myself, and also with you guys like taking on coaching and stuff. And I'm out of battery. And I really need to get a second one. But honestly, I've said a lot of the YouTube things that I want to say. Pretty much moving forward, I'm going to share more. I'm going to share more vlog type, type things. Like the proactive part of my resilience. And I hope you're into it. If you're watching now, I trust that you're at least open to it. And just share feedback along the way, I suppose. Because I'm not going to get into all of that right now. But I'm also going to start creating courses do more coaching, and just fun, gifty things for you. Just offer more, and create more, and do more, and see how it serves me and serves you. So that's all for me for now, I suppose. Be prepared to watch more, um, because there's going to be more coming. So thanks for watching this whole thing if you did. Like, subscribe, comment. Buy me a coffee if you feel so obliged to do so. Have the extra funds to do so. And um, I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>